We may have to postpone this. No, oh, right we're back, back up. up. We're back up. We're yeah, good. Just a few seconds. This is going to be a rough one. I'm, we're, I'm testing whether <laughs> or not the, the mesh Wi-Fi thing that I installed was actually working or not. And it seems like it may have been better. Yeah. Well, yeah, then it again, like it's worse without it. Well, but then again, I haven't had any like internet droppages since removing it up until now. Maybe it's just a bad night for it. Maybe. Who knows? It's, it's too cold out. <laughs> yeah. But I apologize if the, the stream keeps going down. We'll try and keep it try and keep it a uh, as streamlined as possible and as smooth as possible if we do go down. Well, do you want to start with your Navy jobs first? Yeah, we'll start with my Navy jobs first. I went through, I found five different uh, uh, jobs in the Navy that I found that were, I thought were pretty interesting, a couple of which I have no earthly idea what they do. Um, so it'll be a fun learning experience. The first one that I came across that really caught my eye uh, was entomologist. Now, I mean, I know what an entomologist is, but I didn't know that there were like military, which I thought was pretty you, interesting. You I think explain to the class what they are. Yeah. So trying to find people who study insects as a career. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. They're insects, <laughs> insects, um, which that's crazy to me. Like I figured that would be something that was like, you know, government contracted, civilian contracted. Yep. But no, apparently that's a job in the Navy. Uh, they, they'll assess and reduce disease risk um, for, you know, different areas that troops may be in. They'll do, you know, they'll implement like disease and pest control systems, uh, disaster relief and humanitarian operations. They'll go and do a lot of that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, study of bugs. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. It seems like they 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 do a lot about diseases and um, things like that as well, which is really really cool. What is the which, work environment according to? Them? I'll just say real quick, it's you know going over lists like this is funny because you know, we we've had this discussion with other people in the past and I've been talking with the, with the kid about, with the military, like almost every job in the civilian world, there's some equivalent to it in the military mm -hmm. for the most part. You well, know, you and, don't, and a lot you don't of really cases, see hyper specific things like an entomologist, but yeah. you'll see things like animal care. Yeah. But that's, <laughs> that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it, right? Like military jobs will, will put you in a position to take, a multitude of different jobs in that industry because you know your one job in the military could very well be five or six different jobs in the civilian sector you know? yeah that's what I was kind of surprised it was one so specific you think it would be something like you know hazmat and disease control or something and then somewhere yeah. in there you have an entomologist yeah no Not apparently just specifically yeah the entomologist, <laughs> entomologist. does all of that <coughs> excuse me um, but yeah, apparently they can be stationed anywhere. Uh, more than 250 Navy and medical facilities around the globe, from Hawaii to Japan, Germany to Guam, and Washington, D.C. to Washington State. Uh, you just gotta like bugs. Yeah, you gotta like bugs. Training and advancing. That'd be you. Upon graduation from graduate school, you must attend officer development school in Newport, Rhode Island. That kind of job would be both very interesting, but not. Yeah, because like it looks like it looks like you have to be an officer to uh, to be. An I mean, you're not obligated to tell your 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 civilian employer about anything, <laughs> but that's yeah, not no. PTSD. Yeah. yeah, no. As a matter of fact, your employer isn't allowed to ask you what your disability mm -hmm. is. They're only allowed to ask you if you have. But if you're trying to get accommodated for it, you know, again, you still don't have to, but it will make your life a lot easier yeah. if you, you know, work together. Yeah. Because I know, like, uh, 
a few of my friends that have PTSD and work a civilian job, they, some of them have actually ended up getting like FMLA so they can take off whenever they need, you know, whenever it gets overwhelming and whatnot, and they need to stay home or go home early or whatnot. It just, it becomes a slippery slope on both sides because it's something that's easily taken advantage of. Because it's not like, you know, if you have some kind of medical condition, you can tell there's something wrong with you. But with PTSD, it's not, that, not like there's really physical signs. No. You can just be like, oh, I'm stressed out going home. Yeah. <laughs> but no. Cause I have seen plenty of people abuse it as well. Uh, but yeah, to answer your question directly, um, that PTSD is a disability, and no, you are not obligated to tell anyone. It. by law you do not have to tell it oh, you, I didn't you, see it was two questions I yeah, saw the last one. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. actually yeah it's against the law for them to ask you what your disability is all you have to do is disclose that you are disabled and proof of that disability Whether yeah, that so be that's the doctor, one thing you do have to actually get it proven you can't just say you have PTSD yeah so anyway um, yeah you have to be an officer to uh to be an entomologist. Yeah, I was saying that I'm fascinated by creatures in general, like animals, bugs, whatever. And I feel like that'd be a really cool job, except I would just never want anything to be on me. Yeah. Like, I am fine with looking at anything being near anything but these people that just let them walk all on you i'm like man i don't know no no even when you tell me they don't bite they're not poisonous i was like eh, still it's fine. he can stay in the he can stay in this cup yeah i'll hold the cup in my hand no problem but i just don't really like things walking on me yeah but interesting i thought that was pretty interesting i was I, it's not something i expected the navy to employ i figured that'd be like a civilian contract type Another one that just is a, just a cool sounding title. It was uh, aerospace experimental psychologist. Uh, so responsibilities uh, as a research specialist and officer in the medical service corps, your research will promote and ensure the safe and effective performance of Navy and Marine Corps personnel in aviation systems. This role may yeah. include providing professional and technical guidance to plan and conduct research and development, test and evaluate the psychological effects of new aviation systems on flight crews, employ yep. your skills. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to, not to, I thought you were, I didn't know it was that long of a description. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to just interrupt you, but it was just, I actually just recently rewatched Top Gun for the first time in like 30 years. Yeah. And it's funny because, like, right in the beginning, one of the guys, I think they call it, like, getting burnt out or something. Like, he mentally loses it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's what this job is for, is to help the people, like, in the beginning of Top Gun that lose their shit. And they're like, no, I can't get back in the plane. I can't do it. Yeah. It's almost like a PTSD kind of thing, but, it, you know, not from combat. It's just from the, the stress and yeah. realizing that. <laughs> You know, you could die at any moment, or the guy in the behind you that your co-pilot could die with you. you know? Yeah, the third, the third uh, bullet point in responsibilities specifically says: employ your skills in human factors engineering to find ways to lessen the impact and emotional effects that accompany supersonic precision maneuvers in an yeah. F A eighteen <laughs> Hornet Strike fighter, specifically <laughs> fighter pilots. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a coincidence. I literally watched it like a month ago. And I yeah. was like, I'm like, oh, that's exactly what that guy's job is, is to help that guy that got burnt out. Yeah. And it sounds like it, the fourth bullet point is assist with personnel selection and training. So that's they're probably one of the people that you have to talk to before you can even become a pilot. Yeah. To like predetermine whether you're ready or not. But the when alien you see... scene in the mall in Miami. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Here's the thing. With with the way that AI is these days, I don't believe it for one second. Oh, dude, there's um, so many TikToks out there about like shit they're finding in Antarctica and shit they're finding in yeah. the ocean. Listen, like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. 
these all these alien things are, are while interesting um I, I don't give them any credence until we have credible scientists and personnel acknowledging them for what they claim to be um during my service have i seen any ufos or uaps no <laughs> no i haven't well actually as a matter of fact i take that back yes i have seen at least a thousand ufos in my lifetime <laughs> just because you don't know what they are it, well if i don't know what it is it's an <laughs> unidentified flying object so yeah, but not identified doesn't mean by you yeah well i know that i know it's a joke but yeah i get it i get it <laughs> no i've never really seen anything that stands out you know there's always you know questionable things in the shadows and whatnot but yeah uh, I'm not really a a big superstitious ghost alien monster kind of person. I'm more like, who's that motherfucker in the dark? <laughs> but I just bring a good point after watching a lot of these videos. I think we should have another conspiracy theory episode and pull some up because apparently there's a whole bunch about Antarctica. Yeah. And then I watched a clip about... Uh, some of the things that there's a theory out there that octopus are actually aliens that came from a meteor. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> just like, man, the things they come up with. Man. I'm, I'm but, fairly certain the science has proven exactly where octopi come from. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, aerospace. And yeah. Yeah. Aerospace yeah. It's experimental experimental it the one about stuff. Antarctica. Yeah. yeah. But like Antarctica is like owned by every country or something. And it's, yeah, it's crazy. But that really made me want to fall down the rabbit hole for Antarctica, but I'll, I'll save it for our conspiracy stream. <laughs> we do, we'll do those at least once every couple of months, it seems. <laughs> Just every time, you know, every time a few months have gone by and there's some new interesting ones, we'll cover them. The next one I have on my list here was one that I thought was actually genuinely kind of weird. Um, but it was an industrial hygiene officer. Uh, now I have no it's earthly. When you, it's when you need the big toothbrush. That's what I'm saying. I, that's what I imagine, right? It's just like, <laughs> you know, Bob the Builder with a giant toothbrush. Like, well, I, I imagine know. it's more like, uh, like field sanitation. You know, when you got to like build the showers, build the latrines, keep the, the, what do you call it, the cook place, the kitchen, yeah, gray water and all that. You know, there's a whole list of things, but normally that just falls under. You know, the gray water falls under the cook's MOS and the latrines falls under like the, you know, quartermaster or supply sergeant's MOS. You know. Yeah. So the description safety in the Navy is about more than detecting enemy ships on sonar. It's about making sure sailors have workplaces that are free of hazards. Oh. Industrial hygiene officers are tasked with inspecting work environments and ensuring their safety. Occupational practices like wearing proper safety gear. Storing hazardous materials correctly and keeping work areas properly cleaned are just a few ways sailors can prevent accidents and injuries. So, uh, um, yeah, because, because like close quarters on a ship, yeah, fuck, dude, yeah. yeah. So, These their main will spread like the plague. Their main responsibilities include assessing workplace risks and providing consult and recommendation to the Navy <laughs> CEOs and their leaders. Yes, military OSHA. No, actually, well, well, I don't know about in the Navy, in the Army. We actually had OSHA would come out. And yeah, there was so did we. A, there was a safety representative with each unit. And I was that safety representative. Yeah, we would have we OSHA would have tours of everything. We would have we would have OSHA come out as well. But apparently, there's also like we have our own internal OSHA that I'm, I'm sure I'm almost 100 percent positive goes by stricter guidelines than OSHA does. <laughs> well, but I I think the the OSHA stuff is more of a side part of their job. I think it's more about like keeping everybody on the ship from fucking dying yeah from sickness. it says providing direction I mean, for the navy's environmental and occupational health conducting training and inspections in industrial or operating settings aboard ships and shore-based workplaces or in the field uh yeah i mean you can apply it anywhere same kind of concept like the army intense i mean you still have to maintain a certain amount of hygiene level out in the field too but i just imagine on a ship for you know 30 60 days at a time like yeah that's a lot more close quarters going on. Yeah. Like, and, you know, the difference is, you know, somebody, well, I guess you can isolate people on a ship too, but somebody in the field gets sick, 
I can just ship them back to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. I'm not stuck on the boat. And again, you have to be an officer uh, to, to do that job. Which makes sense. Yeah. Those uh, kind of jobs, the ones that you're listing in the military, that's typically like some kind of warrant officer's position. Yeah, yeah. The next I one I had... Do have warrant officers? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Matter of fact, I th- in a lot of cases, warrant officers are more respected than actual fully-fledged officers. Uh, because well, most most warrant officers have been in the military, you know, or that are, are you know been in there longer than dirt. Um, are they the same as army warrant officers? They are above chiefs, and they are commissioned officers, but they're not officers. Officers. As I said, so in the army, it's like a whole separate. Like side branch yeah. of the officers. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Same in the Navy. Separate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same in the Navy. Um as a matter of fact, I got to witness a warrant officer tell the skipper of a ship to get the fuck out of his office. And the skipper was like, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, because they still hold equal ranks to their you know lateral equal ranks. So. Yeah. But uh the next one I found, which I thought was a really really cool job was a research biochemist and forensic toxicologist hmm. so uh they uh i like gert's description of the other guy's job it's a bomb did you wash your hands brush your teeth clean up mom. your mess yeah yeah they uh i mean and that that, that they do the, the biochemists and forensic toxicologists do exactly what their title says they do Forensic toxicology and biochemistry. Um, they serve as a member of a deployable CBRE, chemical, biological, radiological, and environmental training team. Um, so they basically help defend us against biological, chemical, and nuclear weapons. So that's pretty. That's pretty important. <laughs> you know, it's funny. You can't even, when you look up, like, army rank charts, half of them don't even show warrant officer. They'll there use the new go. cloaking device to hide the trash. <laughs> <laughs> now you're making me want to have to research a, this apparent, a new cloaking device. Am I missing <laughs> something? This, this trash kind of makes me want to speak of the conspiracies. I want to fall down the rabbit hole of the, uh, what is it? The, the giant trash swirls or whatever in the ocean. Oh yeah. So uh, there's a lot of interesting technologies that I've seen, you know, clips of them introducing, but <laughs> use a VPN. Yeah. You start researching cloaking devices. Next thing you know, that's a one man stream. Thin sheet cloaking device. I think I may I may have heard something about that, but they it's like it looks like a piece of glass, but it reflects it refracts light around to the side, so you can stand behind this piece of glass and it looks transparent, but it's actually refracting light around you. Invisibility cloak, man. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, the final job that I that I picked out. Okay, yeah, that's it. Okay, so I have heard about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can actually, that's actually pretty simple to make. You can make those um, with common things. Um, apparently, you like a TV lens works kind of similar. Like a flat screen, like plasma TV screen works real similar. But anyway. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I've seen, I've seen those too, though. That is a see-through TV. Yeah. Um. The the final one I saw was Mind Man, and uh, it, yeah, it, it comes with a video, and so I think I'm gonna share the video here. Let's go ahead and pull that up. Do you never really know what you're gonna find on the? Oh, you know what? Here, let me see if I can find if I can pull up the video or the the the. Uh, the audio so we can we can hear it give me one second uh audio input 
source. And it's going to be. No, it's not. On the fly. I'm doing it. We're doing it live. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Here we go. Boom. Okay. Uh, I have to pause the music. Inquiring minds need to know. All right, here we go. Bottom of the ocean. Do you never really know what you're going to find on the bottom of the ocean floor? Okay, so I'm going to pause it right there. That We were talking about this before stream, but the army, they use MOSs. They use numbers and letters to determine, you know, to, to delineate what job is what. In the Navy, we use like two to three letters. So they just showed it right there. The, the MOS for a mine man is MN. Our job is to enter mine pits. Our job is to clear minefields, both a combination of hunting and sweeping. This is so cool. Mines are incredibly cheap, and the threat of a mine alone is enough to haul the whole thing. It can take upwards of a week or two to clear a, a few square miles. We're a wooden ship, one of the few wooden ships in the Navy. The real key here is that we have to remain non-magnetic in order to make sure that we're safe in a minefield. We try to uh, mimic a ship bigger than us by using our equipment. So we have acoustic devices that can uh, simulate the sound of a uh, engine room or propeller. We also have a magnetic cable mimics the magnetic signature of a bigger ship. And then we use a remote operated vehicle operated through our combat information center in order to identify that mine and uh, then neutralize it. All stations, this is the tag, have a contact. 07, range 148 yards. There's two main types of mines. You have a moored and a under. bottom mine. Moored mines are basically all the same. If you run into it, it'll explode. <clears throat> bottom mines can be anything from seismic if the ship's Dragon. wave is. Sorry, this is interesting, man. We'll go ahead and we'll get back to it. Sorry. <laughs> So Asking yeah, you, what the fuck are they talking about? They are. You can't hear it on the stream. They're they're I they're kin. They What's are the short description. They are mine minesweepers essentially. They go and they search for mines, but just water mines, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what they were saying is they the ships that they use, which is really really interesting in itself, are wooden. They're some of the, the few wooden ships in the navy. The reason they do that is because they don't want to have a magnetic signature, but yeah. they have equipment on the ship that will uh, that is designed to make the ship seem bigger than it actually is so they have like these magnetic strips that'll like mimic the signal of like the magnetic signature of a larger ship um and they have like these uh, unmanned um vehicles that'll go and identify it and and stuff like that it's uh that's it's a really really cool looking job yeah it's basically like the army equivalent of the eod explosive ordnance yeah 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 but yeah water yeah yeah because they have all kinds of yeah the, the, anti-tank the, sweeper mine sweeper yeah the navy has an eod eod squad as well i but, figured uh, that was part of it <laughs> no no this is a completely different thing this is ocean-based eod is more is land-based they work they they typically work with the seal team there's typically always an eod guy in a seal team well i just figured there would be like well, like I said, in the army, you have like the driver title, and there's all the different types of drivers. So, I yeah, it would be like one type of EOD would be the water mine people. Well, let's see, let's see, what's the training training and advancement look like? So, after RTC <laughs> and Great Lakes, you go to A school. Yeah, no, you just have to go to boot camp. There's no. Uh, there's no like special training for it. you go to boot camp and then you go to a school for it it's not like you don't you have to go to like a separate thing like for spec ops yeah 
EOD, man, those are those guys are crazy people. Crazy, dude. <laughs> yeah. Whoever says I want to go out and disarm bombs for a living is fucking crazy. We're just thinking a weird adrenaline junkie. Yeah. Yeah. But... <laughs> That's nuts to me. But anyway, you still you have a list to go through, don't you? Oh, was that the last one? Ben, you were gonna be EOD? Oh, it takes a special kind of breed. There are two people that are that have two jobs in the Navy, at least, that you have to be a special kind of breed for. Number one, EOD, and number two, anything in a submarine. <laughs> I was gonna say, or like uh, the damn the divers, like yeah, underwater a, welding divers and shit. yeah. A buddy of mine, he um, a friend of mine who I um, I met when I was stationed in Florida. He worked at the um, he worked at the hospital. He was a corpsman, and uh, he ended up moving rates he went to go be a navy diver and uh he made it he he went through the whole program he ended up becoming a diver uh i'm super proud of him can't help but think about that movie with the was it gooding jr right oh yeah 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 yeah. cuba gooding jr yeah can't remember the name of it but yeah yeah (laughs) cookie but um what's funny about this guy and this is something that we've talked about before but it's it really speaks to the nature of like military relationships you know i only you know i met this guy while i was stationed in florida and i hung out the entire time in florida and then once i left florida we didn't really ever talk that much again like every once in a while we'd you know talk we talked for like 45 minutes or whatever but um when i got married uh i invite you know I, i told this guy that i was you know i told him i was getting married and as a joke, I invited him to the wedding. And uh, this motherfucker came. He was stationed in Guam at the time, doing his Navy diver stuff. He came from Guam to come to our wedding, <laughs> slept on the floor of our apartment. <laughs> and it's like, man, I hadn't talked to him in like two years prior to that. Just out of the blue messaged him. Hey, man, I'm getting married. You should come. You know, as a kind of a joke. Um, and he was like, yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean maybe i'm just older and lazy nowadays but it's like i feel like if one of my biggest military buddies called me and said hey, i need you to travel across the country i'd be like you paying I'm well sure. see I, I didn't know i didn't know he was in guam he he made that decision on his own if he'd have told me he wasn't even in the country i'd have been like all right, man, you don't have to come. It was kind of a joke. I just <laughs> yeah. figured I'd let you know. But no, he fucking showed up. Well, some of my list are more like I just wanted to know what they were. Because it yeah. sounded interesting. Uh, so like we were saying earlier, years ago by just a uh, letter abbreviation, all the army jobs is two numbers followed by a letter. And they kind of get pulled together so like all the like uh what we call like headquarters you know like office personnel type people were all 92 somethings Mm -hmm. and just depending on which 92 you were was whether you're a clerk or the supply sergeant or whatever you know same thing with like 88s was all different kinds of drivers and mechanics are all like uh 60 somethings i don't remember (laughs) but the first one, though, is a, a 29 Echo. It's an, an electronic warfare specialist. Oh, there's some of those in the Navy. We have some and there's a couple There's a couple other MOSs that you know sound more like hackers, but this one was a little bit more interesting. Electronic warfare made me wonder what exactly that was. and didn't really get anything super interesting. Like it just says, like, Assist to support units, maintain and assist in developing electronic warfare staff estimate. <laughs> like, like okay, overseas pre-combat inspections, pre-combat checks. I'm like, like that's it. Is they it probably too... they probably run like signal jamming. Yeah, UAV. Um, they probably do a, a good fair well, amount no. of of systems no, hacking. There's, there's a lot of almost as a do those individual things oh this one just more seems like a an ops overseer okay so like the qa guy of that department 
Yeah, of like all those other MOSs. Yeah. <laughs> Which There's means this, you probably it have so to be cool at first. Well, like I mean, that means warfare specialist. That like, means you damn. probably have to be really, really good because you have to know what everybody else is doing too. Yeah, you, you know? know what all their jobs are. But yeah, it was just less of an exciting description. Yeah, I was thinking like nuclear bomb specialist or something. We've got some of those in the navy. I can pull up some descriptions for <laughs> you. <laughs> Uh, the next one. So again, the the main number, forty two, is the. I always suck at this word. The adjutant. Is that, is that right? Adjutant. Mm -hmm. General's corp. Okay. Under under this one, there's a couple that were interesting. Uh, part of the ones I was saying, like I always trying to tell the kid, like you can be anything. And one of them's a forty two Romeo is just listed as a musician. Yeah, Navy has musicians, yeah. And then there's 42 Sierra, special band musician. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is this HR, human resource specialist. So yeah. It's just kind of weird how those three were tied in there. You know, like yeah. the ba band and then HR. <laughs> like, yeah. All right. But I was curious, what's the difference between a musician and a special band musician? I can tell you. Um, there's something I can tell of... you too, I got it pulled up. Oh well, yeah. Tell us. Let's see. It. Let's see if it's different from the 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 army as it is from the navy. So the standard musician is the army band person. Bands person specializes in one or more of the following, like it's specified by instruments. You have tuba, trombone, euphonium, bassoon, electronic bass guitar, saxophone, flute, or piccolo, oboe, clarinet, French horn, percussion. Cornet or cornet, trumpet? Cornet. Yep. G guitar and keyboard. So yep. it's like broken down by instruments. Mm -hmm. And then the special band musician is uh, performs as a musician or in direct support of the U.S. Army Band, the Field Band, the Ac Academy Band, or mm -hmm. the 3rd Infantry, quote unquote, the Old Guard. Thief and Drums Corps. Mm -hmm. So it's basically just the special band groups. Yeah. Yeah. So in the Navy. You're, you're the elite musician. Yeah. In the Navy, the musician rate, everybody has the musician rate. Like, every, like, no matter what you're doing as a musician, that's your rate. But within the musician rate, there are different like categories. So you have like the main musician where you're playing, you know, the balls and the events and things like that. And then you have like, the special group where there's typically like singers and a choir and they go out around the like world competitions and, and do and like shows. competitions and tours and shows and that's what everybody sees on social media um that's yeah. that, and that's pretty cool. cool that's pretty cool some of the uh the navy band is really really good especially like the the public facing one that they post all the youtube videos about the the I mean, singing acapella good. group is really, really good too. <laughs> so like it's just interesting to think, you know, you could be a you know four year high school band geek basically. Yeah. And then join the military and continue it. And yeah. then you know, you could do retire from the military. Yeah. As a musician. Like it's just crazy that, you know, you could have guitar as your passion or something and <laughs> retire from the military as a yeah. guitarist. Yeah, you could do, yeah, Ben, you really can do just about anything in the military. What I am curious, though, is like, do you get to choose your instrument kind of thing? Or do they kind of make you pick from what they need or what, you know? Like, I don't know how that works. I, I don't either. I wish I knew. I'm, I'm sure if you already know an instrument, then they're going to keep you on that instrument. Um, yeah, but... Uh, as far as I, I mean, I've never been in a high school band, but a high school bands like, look, we don't need 37 fucking flutist, you know, yeah. we well, need something else. The difference, the, the, and I don't know if this, how this works in musician A school, I could probably look it up, but in high school, you, you just express what you're interested in and then they fit you in. Like when I went to, to do band for the first time, I wanted to do two things. I wanted to play flute or I wanted to play uh, drums. Um, and 
I sat down with the instructor, you know, before everything started, uh, with, with, with my, with my parents, this was like before it started, you know? And so I sat down with, with the, the band instructor and, you know, he tried to like teach me how to like make the mouth movements for flute and I couldn't get it down very right. And then he said that the spots were filled up for percussion. He was like, but you know what? You do look like somebody that'd be really good at trumpet. And so I tried yeah. trumpet. And that's what I ended up playing. Uh, and when I got to high school, they offered another opportunity because at least in, in, in band and in brass, and same thing with woodwinds as well, but in brass, the embouchure, the movement of your mouth is very similar between the different instruments. So you can transition. It's just a little bit of a learning curve to try and learn the new the new embouchure. And they, they wanted me to play French horn instead of trumpet because they needed some French horn players. Um, you look like a triangle like a player. player. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that, I, I would assume that's kind of how it works too. It's like, look, we, you know, I know you play trumpet, but we kind of need a trombone player. Will you be interested in maybe switching to trombone? I don't know. Well, yeah, uh, at least if it's something in the same family, that makes sense. But if you're yeah. like a guitar player and they're like, we want you to play trombone, you're like, no, man, I've got to play guitars. I, you know, you can switch me to a different type of guitar or something like that. But yeah, but yeah I'd, I'd be curious to. Well, I mean, strings, strings, string, and string instruments are, are very similar too. Like, if you can play guitar, you could probably pick up mandolin pretty quick. You could probably pick up bass pretty quick. You could probably pick up harp pretty quick. Well, that's quick. what I said. <laughs> you know, but you wouldn't want to go. You know, like you said, from like strings to fucking brass. Oh yeah, I don't think or, I don't yeah. think they would do that. I don't because that that requires a, a complete and total like ground up training. <laughs> you know, and yeah. I don't think the military has time for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, it's like I said, if you're trying to make a band and you already have you know 15 <laughs> percussion, well, I don't need a 16. Well, I, I need think something else. So. I, I I actually genuinely think that you have to try out to be a musician in the navy. I think you have to be selected. Like you have to. You know, play your instrument. If you're good, then they take you. Then you get the yeah. Well, what if it's you know kind of like you want to go airborne? You know, you yeah. You go to airborne school. You don't just sign up to be airborne. Yeah. So that that would make more sense if it's not really like an MOS, but more like a specialty position to apply to. Yeah. So you would go in as like a mechanic and then apply to be a musician. I don't that that's I don't think that's how that well I mean yeah you I think you could do that but I know when I was joining I could have joined as a musician and started as a musician but then again I I, I played an instrument so that's probably why they said that to me. <laughs> because I already played an well, instrument yeah I don't know it'd be interesting to figure more about that because I would wonder like I wonder what their 40 hour work week is like too you know it's like, yeah what are you doing as a musician practice playing your instrument eight hours a day yeah pt in the morning followed by eight hours of fluting go yeah yeah <laughs> i don't know makes me wonder or if it's just like or like i said it'd make more sense if it's like a side mos so you're like a clerk and the musician so yeah when there's nothing musician-y to do you're just the clerk yeah <laughs> like, Uh, well, yeah, so that's musician and specialty musician. Next, I have, what was the full thing here? Oh, it's just one. So a 51 Charlie is acquisitions core includes the acquisition, logistics, and technology NCO. I was just curious what we're acquiring. Sounds like it's just a basic <laughs> supply officer. <coughs> Maybe. It's the... Well, that description just makes it more confusing. Let's go a little deeper. The official description is a highly critical career field established in December 2006 to meet the Army's in continuous increasing need for contingency contracting officers in the modular force. Thanks. What the fuck do you do? Yeah. I want to sign Let's up for see. that. That sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is that? Responsible for the life cycle management process of the Army's new contracting NCO Corps. Okay, so they, they handle civilian contracting? Handles the recruitment, retention, individual training, and education, distribution, sustainable professional development of separ in separation. 
NCO stands for non-commissioned officer, though. You can have civilian NCOs. No idea. Contracting is here. It doesn't really say in the description that I understand. Anyway. It almost it almost sounds like a liaison between like a Oh, here we go. Con- okay. okay. So they have a vital job of providing forward contracting support to ongoing war zone and humanitarian missions in the world. So they set up things, you know. Like the food courts and the tents and stuff. Oh, okay. They whatnot. coordinate all that. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Interesting. That'd be a pretty cool job. Yeah, that's that's definitely has a lot of civilian See, applications. Again, the adult in me, if I would have been choosing my list, I would have been like, I'm like, you know, this has long term usefulness for the rest of my life. Yeah, you could go work at any food bank in America, <laughs> you know. Well, anywhere. I mean, you're going to be a, you know, logistics specialist. Acquisition yeah. and logistics. I mean, shit. Yeah. You could take that almost anywhere. Yeah. I mean, I use, I use, I worked when I was, when I joined the Navy, I came in as a packed airman, P-A-C-T. Um, what that meant was um, I was attached to the aviation side of the Navy, but I didn't actually have a job. I had no rate. So I was doing whatever the military needed me to do within the aviation sector. <clears throat> when I first joined, my first duty station was in Florida where I was doing, uh, I was working with the supply, the logistic team for the helicopter squadrons on the base. So I would, you know, take inventory of the parts. Uh, we would deliver the parts to the squadrons and, and, uh, we would inventory like the pre-expendables, so all like the washers and nuts and bolts and O-rings and yeah. things of that nature. We had all of that in stock, and we had to count them by the thousands every month. Um, and I use that on my resume to this day because that's valuable yeah. tools. That's yeah. data entry. That's time management. That's inventory. That's profit and loss. That's, you know... <laughs> Uh, you know, all kinds of valuable real world skills. Yeah, let's. Yeah, a lot of the it was tough for me on my resume trying to put mine because it was like, other than like being the shop foreman, like all I could really say was I was a parts replacer. <laughs> well, I, you you, but, you have to learn how to take your job description down and break it down into the skills that come with it. So, like as a shop foreman, you have. You have well, management yeah, skills. Know. You have That's delegation what I said. skills. I said have, the yeah. only one that applied was my shot foreman. Yeah. Other than that, where it's like, you know, I was a combat medic. I'm like, well, okay. So you know how to put on a band. <laughs> what does that do for me at my tech support job? I can tell you exactly what that <laughs> does for you. That keeps you calm under pressure. That yeah. uh, that makes you uh, effective in a stressful environment. Um, that's just the fucking military in general what are you talking about w- w- right you know you have to write your resume like you're writing an eval <laughs> did you ever have to write your evals in the military no so in the navy most places make you write your own evals and then you will submit it to your superior and your superior will make their edits and then submit it and then you get evaluated every year I mean I'm sure you do evaluations in the army right yeah yeah well, in the Navy, you write your own. <laughs> and so there are multiple courses that you go through and multiple classes that they make you take on how to take these what seem like minimal tasks that you do throughout the day and make them something. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Marketable. Well, yeah, the problem, though, with a resume, at least for me. Like, when it came to writing, putting together my last one for my current job, it's like, I'm 40 years old now, and we've gone over the job list. I've held, like, 20 different jobs. Yeah. I've done so much shit in my life, I could give you a five-page resume. My problem is, 
always wanted to condense it down into a, you know, manageable, readable portion. And then once I'm talking to you, you know, I just want to give you those bullet points to make you want to ask me more about it. Like, hey, I noticed you said something about being a combat lifesaver. What the fuck does that mean? You're like, well, yeah, let me tell you. Like, yeah, I leave the descriptions for when we're once you get me sit it down in front of you. So the real struggle was trying to find a two page resume with enough bullet points that jump out to make you want to talk to me. Yeah. And then I'll break down those descriptors. It just made it hard trying to figure out, well, what's going to jump at you? What's relevant? What's going to be like, why the fuck did you put this on here? You know, like, <laughs> I was certified to drive with night vision goggles on. Like, yeah, it's not really relevant, <laughs> you know, but it's still a, a unique certification that I got at one point in time. Yeah, but, my, my, I don't know, but the way, in my mind, the way that I work and the way that writing my own evals in the Navy, it's taught me <clears throat> is when <clears throat> when I'm applying for a job, I'm going to every every employer gets a different version of my resume because i'm going to tailor each resume i hand to you specifically to the job that i'm applying for <clears throat> and for like a perfect example you learned how to drive a truck in night vision there's there's something that could be put on a resume about that you know yeah but is it going to override all the other things like put on the resume well not necessarily but again you know if if you do it how I do, where my resume is targeted to the job that I want, I'm not going to put absolutely everything in there because it's not relevant. If it's not relevant, I'm not going to put it in. I know, but I wish I could. It'd be cool if I could have a five-page resume. And I do. Take the time to read it. I do. I have, I have like, a full-on, like, full-blown, complete entire history resume, and then when I apply for jobs, I just pull from that relevant information onto a new resume that I then submit. Yeah, so I got a lot of random skills. <laughs> I haven't too. acquired too many new ones in the last ten years, but man, in the army, I was doing everything. Yeah, I was doing a lot of cool stuff, man. Speaking of cool stuff, the next one on my list is a what was the actual MOS again? A so, so I was talking about the eighty eights, right? Now, I always knew eighty eight mics when I was in the army as the drivers, so. There's the guys that, you know, they do, like, supply runs and stuff like that. Uh, they do fuel tankers, you know, anything that's on a you know, cargo hauling, basically. Mm -hmm. There's an 88 mic. And didn't realize there was, like, eight other 88s. And one of them's an 88 Papa, which is a railroad, rail, blah, blah. Railway equipment repair. Like a train mechanic. <laughs> that's fucking badass <laughs> so there's three train jobs so there's the railway equipment mechanic there's the railway section mechanic like the track mechanic yeah and then a railway operations crew member are like there the really that driver. many are there really that many like railways that the military is well, using and that was my first thought but then i thought you know that my flashbacks in the army Every time they haul equipment to, like, new training areas and things like that, they do it by train. They're not doing it by cars. You see it all the time. Trains just filled with Humvees and shit <laughs> hauling down the tracks. Interesting. Like, that's how... When we were in Hawaii and we went to do training in Death Valley... Or was that it? Oh, where were we? No, it was when we... I don't remember. Somewhere along the lines, I drove all of our vehicles to the trains, got them on carts, and helped ratchet them down with the chain ratchets. Damn. So like, I never so realized I that. Yeah. Like, I see it all the time. And just, But, I mean, the difference is, like, when I was doing that, yeah, we helped to load, but it was a whole civilian crew there. Yeah. I never realized there was an MOS for it somewhere, too. But it makes sense. I mean, like I said, they haul shit all over the u.s well it looks like it looks train. like it looks like those train guys are like the only they're only the maintenance crew they're not like the actual conductors it seems like maybe the well, trains are conducted operations by... crew member so that's, that's, well, that's i mean the driver i don't know man maybe that's like the guy that works in like the fucking electric or engine room you know 
the civilians are probably the ones that actually drive the trains, but the military is the one that maintain it and the track and everything now. Well, let's see what that bonus is. I looked up just the train mechanic because I thought that was interesting. Let's see what the crew member does. Yeah, it's all part of like Corps of Engineers. Yeah. The National Guard. Uh, a video. I think. Here we go. Uh, supervise and operates the Army's sophisticated diesel electronic locomotives. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> Car coupling and uncoupling, send and receive signals, execute orders from the towers, switches, and other personnel. Well, maybe not. I don't know. One says. It looks like maybe you just make sure everything flows. You're more yeah, like a train what I'm station saying. operator. That's what I'm saying. Like, they're the guys that, you know, maintain everything, but the civilians actually drive them. Yeah. Still, though, fuck, that'd be cool to go yeah. work at a train yard every day. Yeah, that'd be sick. I want to I wanna put an honorable mention. Uh, are you done with your yeah. list? No. No? Okay, well, go ahead. We'll, we'll do the honorable mention at the end. I don't even think this is a Navy... MLS. I, actually, I don't even think it's an MLS at all, but it's a position within the military that I think deserves some recognition for being an interesting job. Another one. I can't remember if this was an MOS or just the the title of all these ones underneath it. Actually, actually look it up real quick. No, I do have it here. I guess it's not. Yeah, that's all the ones under it. Okay. So... One group of MOSs is the Quartermaster Corps. It's the provides water, food, parts, petroleum, and other products to Army operations. And there's several of them under there. There's like automated logistical, petroleum, parachute, rigger, shower, and laundry. Okay. Water treatment specialist, which reminds me of the that Polly Shore movie. Yeah. In the <laughs> Army now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Love that unit movie. supply specialist, you know, which is just your supply sergeant that keeps all the shit that you need, like pens and paper. Uh, but the interesting one on here was mortuary affairs specialist. Yeah, there's a mortuary in the Navy, too. Well, I mean, I guess, again, I always just assumed that was just kind of a mix between, like, the chaplain's job and... Supply sergeant or logistics or something. Yeah. But no, apparently it's a whole MOS dedicated to inventory, safeguard, and evacuate personal effects of disease, deceased personnel. You know, handling, you know, like somebody dies out in the field, they handle the whole escort and ceremony service, you know, things like that. So it's, it's kind of... Interesting. Supervises yeah. recovery, collection, establish a tentative identification, escort, and temporary burial. Yeah, that's just, a tough job, man. God, I, that's what I was thinking. Like, that would kind of suck. Yeah, that's, like, that's your whole one of the job. worst fucking jobs, dude. 40 hours a week just dealing with death. Yeah. And I guess, you know, like, one thing, I don't know, I mean, I guess there's mortuaries everywhere, but I feel like it hits a little differently to be yeah. the the military mortuary. Yeah. Yeah. Like, man. But it's like, yeah, I guess I was just assumed that was part of like the chaplain's job, which is a whole nother weird one when you think about it. Is you don't have one for each denomination. It's just chaplain. Really? You in the army you don't? Well I mean they, they will, like each chaplain will do something, but they're there to support you for anything. Yeah. I, I know that the chaplains in the Navy, they have, in the Navy, I don't know if, if the Army does the same thing, but in the Navy, you have, each rate has like a special patch that they wear. That, you know, just by looking at the patch, you can see what their job is. Um, chaplains are unique in the sense that their rate is just a chaplain, but their patches will change based on their denomination. And typically they'll have multiple different denomination chaplains at in a military facility um but yeah the chaplains almost serve as like therapists and counselors um and it doesn't really matter uh what their denomination is they're they're gonna help you out um, you don't even have to be religious you still will go to a chaplain for 
you know, like counseling and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's pretty cool. So it says here, yeah, uh, while each army chaplain is a clergy person for their specific denomination or faith group and won't be asked to perform services or duties outside of their denomination, their role is to promote spirituality and faith as a whole. Yes, general moral guidance. So, That's exactly right. So yeah, you're, they're not going to make the you know, Mormon priests go do a Christian wedding. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's a Mormon priest, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've always just seen them. They just have like a captain's rank or major rank. And then on the other collar, they have a cross. So they don't wear the rank on both collars. They wear one rank and one like cross to yeah. signify that they're a chaplain. Yeah. Some, some chaplains will have crosses in the Navy. Some will have um, the, uh, the, oh, I really don't want to get this wrong. The star for, for Judaism. Yeah. Um, some will have, um for like hindu um they'll have their symbol um yeah it was it was a really really interesting kind of uh i don't know if there, I don't know if there is different symbols i've only <laughs> ever seen one. Oh no okay yeah there we go so they have a that looks like a ship wheel for buddhist yeah uh, the Christian cross, the whatever the Hindi symbol is, looks like a thirty. The the Jewish uh, tablets with the little star above it. Yeah. The Muslim moon. Mm -hmm. And then whatever chaplain candidate is, that thing looks weird. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I didn't realize they yeah had different ones. I don't think I've ever seen anything but the cross. But it's not like I ran into a hundred chaplains or something. But. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I wonder what what's up with the Buddhist like ship wheel. <clears throat> but yeah, next. Yeah. Uh... and then I forget. Yeah, when they changed uniforms to one that just has the the rank Velcro patch in the middle of your chest, yeah, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's the only thing I would just see a cross right there. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Randomness. Or like this guy, Rio. So they had a above the what was it right, right shoulder above the name patch. They had a cross, and then it was still a rank in the center of their chest. Okay. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's what I saw. Yeah, memories are hard. Can't remember all this stuff. Yeah. So what's your my honorable moral mention guidance? Yeah, my honorable mention. Actually, I found out. I just looked it up. It is a uh, it is an MOS in the army. It is it is taken care of by army personnel, but it's the guards of the tomb of the unknown soldier. Um, oh yeah, those well, guys. That's, are, a, that's not an MOS though. It's a volunteer only thing. But yeah. what what I find extremely interesting about it is, it has to be, with the exception of maybe. Uh, the ship, the shipmates that that um, are stationed on old old Ironsides, one of the strictest uh, positions ever. Like these guys, <laughs> I, I've watched countless documentaries about like how they have to prepare for their shift and like how their inspections are, and these guys are living embodiments of perfection when it comes to like uniform and posture and cadence like it's uh it's really 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 impressive to see and if you don't know i definitely suggest diving down that rabbit hole look up some tiktok videos you'll see some good ones and funny ones i mean there's videos on youtube that take you into back into their like dressing room it shows like their whole process well it's... i'm just talking about like them actually doing the guard process. Oh, yeah, and they because they have it, to that chase shit off is, everything. Yeah, it, they, and they're they're dead serious. It's shit is not a joke, dude. It's not. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like a joke though when they're yelling at a bird. Yeah, the guards and... for the uh, tomb of the unknown soldier. Yeah, I've seen TikToks where they're like, like a goose or something. <laughs> walks up there and they walk up and scream at the goose the same way the person they're like uh, behind the line 
Like, dude, it's a goose. <laughs> like, y'all need to have a better process to just yeah. shoot the goose <laughs> off. Like, come on. Goose just looks at you like, you know who I am? Yeah. <laughs> but on the similar side, on the Navy, <coughs> Old Ironsides is the is the, the last remaining uh, fully wooden naval ship, commissioned naval ship. Um, and you can get orders to serve on that ship, and it's the same kind of deal. Like, because it's a very public-facing attraction... There's tourists, yeah. but it's still a functioning warship. Like it could go out and go do missions right now. Obviously, it wouldn't do too well because it's fully wooden, it's old and outdated. But it's a functioning warship still. Um, and their their guidelines and their their structure is also extremely strict. You have to be tip top. Matter of fact, there's a height requirement. <laughs> you know, that's another thing we should look at for the next stream. Maybe maybe do. Uh, well, I guess it could go after, but the specialty positions like the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and Iron Sides, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of them in the army too, like all the different trainings you can go to and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Be, be cool though. I've always wanted to learn more about them and just never took the time until we're talking about them now. And now I'm like, man, I really want to know because there's in the army, there's a sapper, a pathfinder, there's airborne air assault and then you got ranger and you got green berets red berets for all the different you know, rangers and special forces yeah there's a lot of different specialties you can go with yeah that. yeah i mean well that's the same thing with the navy like you know people talk about the navy seals it's like what you don't realize is the seals is a broad term for a, a multiple a multitude of different jobs the seals are a team of people with different jobs and those individual jobs are really really cool i still remember when uh like shortly after i got stationed in germany i remember seeing this dude had to be like in his 50s or something walking down the sidewalk and i've never seen anybody like this ever since dude was wearing like the green beret and above his like name tag and shit he was like pathfinder ranger Green Beret, fucking just had about eight different things that at the time I barely even knew half of them were on his uniform. And I'm like, man, that's the kind of guy that could just take out a squad with an MRE spoon, man. Yeah. Like, fuck. Yeah. Like, it's like the true superheroes yeah. of our time. <laughs> yeah. Dude's like John Wick in uniform, man. Yeah. Just like, do what you're asking. The walking persona of do what you're asking handle. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Like you see, you see, you see guys like that in the movies, and you think, "Oh, it's just a movie. That's really cool." But it's like sometimes you have to understand that there are people that exist in this world that are like that. <laughs> and when you get to meet them face to face, it's an experience. <laughs> yeah, they Those, they just look intense. Yeah, like just being around like, them is like gives you squirrelies. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, like the guy I'm talking about. I mean, this was going on thirty years ago. Yeah, still can almost envision that dude's face or just the intensity. Yeah, that dude, the kind of like amount of focus that's just like he gives no fucks about anybody walking around him because he's like, I can murder all of you. Yeah, before you would even know what's going on. Yeah, <laughs> it's just not like no care, but no fear. No, like, fear. literally, like like walking, no fear. Yeah. At least not you know, visible. Not fucking not on that base anyway, because that was like a training base. <laughs> it's yeah. like, it's like, look, all y'all are beneath me. Kind of walk. You know? Yeah, I, it was. Like, it was always like that when I got to when I got to be around like the pilots and stuff on the 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 with the uh, the F A eighteens. Uh, those guys were always real. Like, you know, oh yeah, I'm the man. Well, yeah, but you're <laughs> but you're talking about like almost like snootiness like ultimately this was like the john wick i don't give a fuck about you kind yeah, of walk yeah. you know? <laughs> like you had respect for him looking at you like that you're like you're right carry on sir yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, let me get the fuck out of your way this yeah. is your sidewalk i'm just visiting my bad yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. you need me to shine your boots what's going on like come on <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> god damn you just 
like I said, that kind of person, you're just like, you're, you're almost like proud to be in their presence. Like yeah, you man. are the army. <laughs> like, yeah. Damn. Yeah. yeah. I haven't really said, I think I've only seen a couple people like that, that just have a lot of shit on the yeah. uniform that you're like, wow. Like, the closest thing I ever got to that was I got to, I got to see, I never got to meet, never got close, but I got to see a, uh, a Blue Angels pilot. Uh, and 